So in the prom, it said we had a bridge, and on top of that bridge is a little car. Someone drew in this little red box. <clears throat> And that car slid off the bridge. Uh, so it went and crashed down into the ground. Um, so now our car is down here on the ground. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So we want to know how fast this car was going when it slid off this icy bridge. So we're going to assume that the bridge is perfectly horizontal for now, um, oh. keeping things a little simpler. So if we do too much with our vectors, we can keep things on a, just a two-dimensional plane uh, with a perfectly horizontal velocity. So this car, when it left here, was traveling at some speed. And we're going to call that velocity in the x-axis. Um, we're going to assume the vy, the initial vertical velocity, is zero uh, just for ease of solving for this one. So we know that the bridge is 24 meters high, and we know that the car lands 37 meters away. We want to know how are we going to find out how fast horizontally was that car going. So we can take advantage of the fact that in a projectile, this Vx is going to remain constant. It's not going to change because nothing's affecting its motion. We saw that up above when we did our graphs. We also have a vertical axis motion, which is free fall. So that's going to take advantage of the fact that uh, we understand the concept of free fall and how gravity affects motion. So since Vx is going to remain constant, if I want to know how far something goes, well, my equation is going to be the distance in the x-axis is that velocity times however long we're moving that way for. And we're going to move that way as long as we are in the air. In the y-axis, when we're talking about coming from a peak to the ground, we're talking about falling. And when we do that, we have this equation for finding distance in the y-axis. But since we're falling, this first term is going to go away because the initial velocity in that y-axis is zero. So here's our two basic equations for projectile motion. The distance in the horizontal axis, the x-axis, is that horizontal velocity times time in the air. The distance in the y-axis is the acceleration due to gravity times the time <coughs> that we are falling squared divided by 2. So what do we know for this to solve this? Well, we know that this is our distance in the y-axis is 24 meters. And this 37 meters is going to be our distance in the x-axis. We are trying to find Vx. So let's isolate our equation for Vx real quick. Vx is equal to dx divided by the time in the air. Okay. We do know dx, as we can see over here, that's 37 meters. But we don't know the time in the air. So we need to find a way that we can solve for that. Um, the nice thing is we can transition to the y-axis to solve for that because, well, time's going to be the same for both sides. So we look at our dy equals gt squared over 2 equation, and we can isolate for t. So the time is going to be equal to the square root of 2dy over g, if we move some things around a little bit. Uh, so here, time in the air, because we are only falling, is equal to the square root of 2 dy divided by g. Right there, that gives us the two equations we need to solve this problem because it solves for the unknown variable in the vx equation using the information in the y-axis. So if we go here and isolate, we or after we've isolated, we go in and plug our values in. We do 2 times 24. 24 meters divided by 10.0 meters per second squared. That is the square root of 4.8. The square root of 4.8 is 2.2 seconds is the time it takes for the object to hit the ground. Vx, on the other hand, we need now we need to take advantage of that. We use that to find Vx. We're going to take our distance in the x-axis, which x-axis, which is 37 meters, divide that by the 2.2 seconds it took to go that far. We do 37 divided by 2.2. We find out that our object with significant figures was traveling at 17 meters per second when it left the top of the hill. We left the icy bridge. <clears throat> Sorry. So 
Now you'll notice here, T air, the time it takes for anything to fall, just like we did with free fall, it's gonna not care about how fast it's moving horizontally. This DX and VX do not affect how long we're gonna be in the air for. What's gonna affect and determine how long it takes to fall is simply dy, and dy is equal to the height. So the height is what determines time to hit the ground. Okay. Um, so hopefully this is a good example of how to work through some of these simple projectile problems, and we'll add some more to it and with some of the later examples.